Explore more about the topics you love with Topper. Subscribe now and keep learning. Okay, now we are done knowing what are elements. Let us jump to what are compounds now. Compounds are also pure substances, but they are made up of elements. For example, water. Water is a compound. It is made up of elements hydrogen and oxygen, where two hydrogen atoms combine with one oxygen atom and form a new substance, water. Now, water has completely new properties than its constituent elements. For example, hydrogen element has a capacity of burning that means it is combustible whereas oxygen supports combustion that means it supports burning whereas water on the other hand extinguishes fire. So water has completely new properties than its constituents. So water is a compound. Let's take one more example. Sodium chloride, the common salt, it is again a compound. It is made up of sodium and chlorine. Both sodium and chlorine elements are poisonous but on the other hand when they combine chemically they lose their properties and sodium chloride is formed which is not at all poisonous. We eat common salt daily. Then again copper sulphate which has copper, sulphur and oxygen. So copper sulphate is a compound which is made up of three elements combining chemically and all the three elements have lost their properties. This salt is blue in color. Do you see copper, sulfur or oxygen anywhere lying different in this compound? No, they are chemically combined. So a compound is made up of elements which chemically combine and lose their properties. Now are the elements combined in any manner? No, for water we require two hydrogen and one oxygen. If it was two hydrogen and two oxygen, it would have been another compound that is hydrogen peroxide. So for any compound to form, the elements should be chemically combined in a fixed proportion. Even when you check copper sulphate, it requires one copper atom, one sulphur atom and four oxygen atoms to combine chemically to form copper sulphate. Now further, when you look at a compound, can you subdivide a compound in its constituent elements? That means, can you break down water into hydrogen and oxygen? Can you break down sodium chloride into sodium and chlorine? Can you break down copper sulphate into copper, sulphur and oxygen? Yes, we can do that, but by chemical means. Suppose we have water in a glass and we need to separate hydrogen and oxygen, the constituent elements present in the water. Is it just possible to throw out hydrogen and oxygen from your hand? No. To separate hydrogen and oxygen from water, we require electrolysis. It's a chemical process. So, a compound can be subdivided into its constituent elements only by chemical means. So, we can define a compound as a substance which is made up of different kind of elements combined chemically in a fixed proportion. And a compound can be subdivided into its constituent elements only by chemical means. <sighs> Isn't that such a big definition? But if you've understood what is a compound, it is easy for you to learn it. Now, why are compounds called pure substances? Are they just made up of one kind of particles? Yes. If you see water. Water is throughout made up of one kind of particles H2O, 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 H2O and so on. Even sodium chloride is made up of only one kind of particles NaCl, 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 NaCl and so on. Even copper sulphate is just made up of CuSO4, CuSO4, CuSO4 throughout. So even compounds are called pure substances. And if elements and compounds both are pure substances, what is the difference between them? The difference between them is that you can subdivide a compound into its constituent elements. That means you can subdivide a compound into simpler substances. For example, sodium chloride can be subdivided into sodium and chlorine. But can you divide only sodium into simpler substance? No, because it is an element, it is just made up of one kind of particles. It is the simplest substance. 
So the difference between an element and a compound is that an element cannot be subdivided into simpler substance, but a compound can be subdivided into simpler substances. Now let us move further and see what are the properties of a compound. Well, we know the properties of compounds already. Let us quickly revise them. The first property says that a compound can be subdivided into simpler substances only by chemical means. Second property says that a compound is represented by its molecular formula. For example, water is represented by H2O. This is its molecular formula. Then, a compound has totally new properties than its constituent elements. For example, water. The next property says that the composition of a compound is the same throughout. If we observe, we can see that the texture and the color of the compound is the same throughout. Explore more about the topics you love with Topper. Subscribe now and keep learning.